Dr. Krishna Reddy from uh, University of Cincinnati. Uh, he got his Bachelor's of Science and Master's of Science uh, from India. And uh, he is... Uh, on Almost same minus radius 
as fe3 plus so then when these incorporate into the hybrid lattice some lattice contraction takes place okay. here our intention is to study the effect of copper on those modified ferrites and perform water acid reaction those are modified ferrites here we choose the composition of copper as 0.25 and one is metal and is iron these are atomic ratios the atomic ratios of iron metal copper are 10 is to 1 is to 0.25 we carried out water acid reaction at elevated temperature and interesting point is this one we used industrial renewable at high space velocity in this study okay before the water acid reaction the activation of the catalyst is very very important because during the water acid reaction we have to convert the hematite phase into the active magnetite phase because magnetite is active for the water acid reaction that we did in presence of process gas at 400 degrees for 4 hours process gas is nothing but mixture of co co2 hydrogen and steam and here both co and hydrogen are oxidized. here both co and hydrogen are oxidized and co2 and water are reducted okay <laughs> okay the ratio between the oxidant and reductants are very very important the ratio between the ratio between oxidant and reductants are very very important because the the ratio we have of hematite is important First, hematite converts into magnetite, then it converts into hematite, then it converts into metallic copper. If you over reduce the hematite, it becomes directed to the hematite, but we required only magnetite here. And if you lesser reduce, then all the hematite may not be reduced into the magnetite. So the reduction means the ratio between oxidant and reductant are very very important. And in present study, we used 1.4 as a ratio so that we can convert all the hematite into the magnetite. Okay, these are our water acid reaction results over iron chromium and iron cerium catalysts. See, when we incorporated copper into the iron chromium, we observed some increase in the activity at 400 and 450, but at 500 and 550, there is little more increase in the activity when we incorporated copper. This may be due to the iron chromium catalyst almost reached equilibrium at higher temperatures. so there is no copper promotion at this temperature but interesting factor is here there is a remarkable change copper additional copper to the iron cerium catalyst decreases the activity of iron cerium but on the other hand iron cerium exhibits almost equilibrium conversion at 450 degree centigrade so this is an interesting behavior in the present study copper has a inhibitor for the water gas shift reaction over iron cerium catalyst this is an interesting observation in the present study okay. these are the promotional effect of copper over iron nickel and iron cobalt catalyst so copper promotes the activity of iron nickel catalyst under also iron nickel copper also reach equilibrium conversion at 50 degree centigrade and the other hand copper also promoted iron cobalt manganese zinc here also copper promotes the water acid activity of both iron manganese and iron zinc catalysts so we observed almost copper promotion for every transition metal doped ferrite except for iron cerium for iron cerium it act as a inhibitor for the water acid reaction okay so i want to explain these interesting behavior based on my calibration techniques like xrd tpr and mass pass spectroscopy studies these are the x-ray diffraction patterns of the calcium catalyst before the activation i can say fresh catalyst so all the catalyst exhibits peaks due to the hematite phase and there are no peaks corresponding to the either copper or the compounds between iron metal and copper it exhibits only the peaks due to the hematite this may be due to the lower metal loadings as well as lower Copper loading. The interesting factor is here. Okay, 
Before the reaction, we did activation. And we took the activated catalyst and we mixed that catalyst with GE varnish in nitrosyl group to prevent the exposure from in it. And we took XRD of those activated catalyst. See, all the activated catalyst exhibits peaks due to the magnetite. There is no hematite. Means that <coughs> the complete reduction was achieved. And there are no peaks to either chromium or copper. But see here. Iron, cerium, copper catalyst exhibits few more additional peaks. These peaks are primarily due to the formation of Ustat. Means that addition of copper to the iron, cerium catalyst and further activation gives the formation of both magnetite and Ustat. And far, we know that Ustat is inactive for the water acid reaction. So the formation of Ustat may be responsible for the Lower act, water acid activity observed in the reactors. But okay, all the other catalyst exhibits only peaks due to the magnetite. Here I will say, iron copper copper, iron magnesium copper, and iron zinc copper exhibits only peaks due to the magnetite. There are no peaks corresponding to the boosted or metallic copper. But only iron serum copper exhibits peaks due to the boosted. Okay, these are some cell parameter cap values of activated catalyst. We know that magnetite is cubic lattice and the most intense peak absorbed at 35 belongs to the 311 plane. So we determined lattice parameter values from the 311 plane and after incarceration of copper, the cell parameter values are increased. This is due to the high ionic radius of copper compared to the iron. So when high ionic radius ion incorporated into the hematite lattice, the lattice expansion takes place results in the increase in the in parameter values. Uh, so, to observe the reduction behavior of hematite to magnetite and magnet to boosted, we did some TPR studies. The pattern is very, very complicated because we involved three metals here. And hematite uh, undergoes almost four transitions, chromium undergoes two, copper undergoes two. So the Patterns are very, very complicated, but we try to fit it with the fit software and we almost achieve. So, first let us start with iron, chromium, copper. Okay, copper undergoes reduction is two stages from plus two to plus one and plus one to zero, then chromium. Then the reduction of hematite to magnetite, then magnetite to hoosted. See, the magnetite to hoosted absorbed almost at 650 degrees centigrade and uh, hematite to magnetite absorbed at around 360. The interesting behavior is iron, cerium, copper catalyst. Okay, here also copper to plus two, copper plus one, and copper plus one to metallic copper are absorbed. But usually we know that ceria reduces around 600 degrees as a surface reduction and bulk reduction absorbed at around 800 degrees. But addition of copper to the iron, cerium brought down the cerium surface reduction from 600 to 250 degrees centigrade. This is an interesting observation. And uh, the reduction of hematite to magnetite absorbed at around maybe 280. And the interesting factor is this one. See, the magnetite to hoosted transition starts at 200 degrees centigrade and it almost reached maximum at 400 degrees centigrade. This means TPR patterns also proves that formation of hoosted phase before the 400 degrees centigrade is that addition of copper to the iron serum catalyst brought on the reduction temperature of hematite to magnetite as well as magnetite to hoosted. So this leads to the formation of hoosted particles during the pretreatment and further reduction to iron and serum bulk reduction absorbed at high temperatures. These are some impermanence of iron nickel copper as well as iron cobalt copper. Here nothing much change was observed. The reduction of hematite to magnetite absorbed at around 250, here also around 250, and some reductions due to the copper, nickel, and further reduction to the boosted, and further reduction of magnetite to boosted to metallic copper was observed. And same was observed in iron zinc copper as well as iron manganese copper. Some reductions due to the manganese, copper, then hematite to magnetite, magnetite to boosted, boosted to metallic copper was observed. So, okay. What happened when we had addition of 
this when we add copper to the transition metal double ferrets so when compared to the q samples compared iron chromium iron cerium iron nickel iron cobalt iron magnesium iron all the copper promoted catalysts shows lesser reduction temperatures of hematite to magnetite transition this means that addition of copper brought down the reduction temperature of hematite to magnetite to much lower temperature but it also brought down the magnetite to hosta temperature to much lower temperature in case of iron cerium copper catalyst so the addition of copper to the iron cerium brought down the magnetite to hosta temperature to much lower temperature Okay. Uh, as I told earlier, we did some mass bus spectroscopy studies over this transition metal double ferrite. And X-ray diffraction patterns of activated catalyst shows that there is a formation of magnetite during the activation. So we know that magnetite is an inverse spinal and which contains cubic structure. And the formula of this magnetite is AB2O4, where A sides are tetrahedral sides and B sides are octahedral sides. Okay. The A sides are occupied by the 1 by 3 iron atoms which contains Fe3 plus ions and B sides are occupied by the 2 by 3 iron atoms which contains both Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions in equal number. The electron means the electron exchange between the Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions in octahedral sides are responsible for the water gas shift reaction as suggested by the several authors. Okay. These are the mass pass spectros of our active samples. Uh, these are the iron chromium and iron chromium copper and this is iron cerium and iron cerium copper. Both iron chromium and iron chromium copper exhibit two six line patterns which correspond to the magnetite. Also iron cerium also exhibits two six line patterns which correspond to the magnetite. There is one peak at zero velocity. This is due to the non-magnetic iron particles and this belongs to the super paramagnetic nature of the iron cerium. The super paramagnetic nature usually observes for the extreme nanoparticles. Maybe the particle size less than 5 nanometers exhibits super paramagnetic nature. This is the mass bar spectra of iron cerium copper catalyst. Here the spectra is very very complicated. We observed, here we observed almost size to the four components. One due to the magnetite, other due to the, this one corresponding to the metallic iron and this is corresponding to the super paramagnetic nature and this is corresponding to the FU. So we are not able to fit this spectra because we almost absorbed 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 doublets, almost 15 peaks. So the software which we have, we cannot fit only 12 peaks. So we are not able to fit. But peak absorbed at around 1.5 velocity is corresponding to the boost type particles. So mass bar spectra also proves that there is a formation of boost type phase during the activation of iron cerium copper catalyst. Okay, these are some mass bar spectra patterns of iron nickel copper, iron nickel cobalt carbon. Here also formation of magnet absorbed in all the activated catalyst. There is no formation of the push step. And the same thing was happened in iron manganese copper as well as iron zinc copper. So it also forms magnetite during the activation of the process. Okay. These are some parameters which we derived from the mass bar spectroscopy study. Isomeric shift, oh, sorry. Isomeric shift, water pole splitting, magnetic field strength, and these are corresponding to the octahedral size and these are corresponding to the so addition of copper to the transition metal doped ferrets decreases the magnetic field strength of the magnetite. Okay. Our shift activity results suggest that copper axon is a promoter for the transition metal doped temper transition metal doped ferrets at elevated temperatures except for the iron serum, while for iron serum it acts as a inhibitor. And uh, among various catalyst investigated, we found that both iron cerium and iron nickel copper exhibits equilibrium conversions at the highest investigated temperature of 50 degrees along with iron chromium copper. And x ray results shows that there is a formation of boosted phase during the activation of iron cerium catalyst, but remaining catalyst only 
exhibits pitch due to the magnetic. And TPR results also support this observation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions for Dr. Reddy? Gary? Uh, can you speculate a bit on Yeah, it should increase the number of microsites. And we were not at investigation of mechanism, but this is process. We required, I think, uh, now we are taking the XPS results, the interaction between like chromium and copper, nickel and copper, manganese and copper. So there, there must be some interaction between the two metals. But we know that always it is difficult to measure the properties of bimetallic catalyst, like nickel, copper, cobalt, copper, because Due to the lower loadings of the copper and metals, we are not able to find anything from the XRD and mass bar. So we are doing XPS now. I think we can get some useful information over these XPS patterns. I think all, all your temperatures you have derived from just TPR results. Yeah. How do you, how certain are you about those temperatures and transitions? No, no. Actually, Sorry, diffraction patterns are... Uh, no, no, the temperatures. The temperatures of transitions. Yeah, but that I'm saying, actually. Uh, these X-ray diffractions are, are... We activate the catalysts and we take XRD, not from the TPM, from the reactor. Uh, but this is after the fact, right? After the... This is not at that temperature. You are saying that transition occurs at 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah. Uh, based only on TPR results. No, actually, you, you are asking about formation of whose type? No, hematite to magnetite. Oh, okay. But uh, the XRD results of activate shows that magnetite was completely formed. There is no speech to the hematite. So during the activation, we found all the... What magnetite. temperature was the activation? It's 400 degrees. Right. Yeah. So, but, but you are assuming that all the transition occur at 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah, but uh, for iron chromium copper, it absorbed almost at 360. Yeah, but that's just based on TPR. How accurate? And how how dependable are these numbers? And the better way would be to do in situ XRD or something. Yeah, in situ XRD is also fine because we can take uh, we can accurate sample from 100, 200, 300, 400. We can take XRD whether magnet magnet was come converted to magnet or But unfortunately, we have such type of facilities. Uh, in your mass bar spectra, it looked like the copper had a significant significant effect on the B to A ratio. Yeah. In the spectra. Yeah. And I remember some work we did a long time ago and found that the, the change in that had a strong correlation with the usage ratio in Fisher Probes. Uh, I wonder if that has something to do with. Actually, those are in investigation because we took these mass spectroscopy recently. I didn't hear you. We took these mass spectroscopy recently, but like we are not we are not able to find any reason why copper is decreasing after the two tetrahedral size ratio. So maybe we need to do some more calculation. I don't know the reason. I just said that's <laughs> strong, but I think that might have a very strong relation to yeah. what's going on. Send up. One more question, last question. Yes. Uh, your temperature, like uh, 400 to 530, is quite high for copper. What do you expect when I mean, for the light, even for the copper layer? Uh, how, how, how soon you lost the functionality you are looking for? If not copper, as other metals, could it be, I mean, doing the same thing, like uh, what do you want to do? Yeah, but uh, from literature, you know that copper acts as a promoter up to 450 percent so we want to investigate that up to 50. And we know that actually copper centers at 500 to 50 degrees. But we did not have any centering of copper here. So we can say that copper acts as a copper. And so we, especially an iron nickel. Even iron nickel copper exhibits equilibrium conversion at 550. And there is no formation of nickel. Uh, it's a well known 
We don't care about copper in the end because Syria does better than Syria. Not only because of stability and activity, but also for sulfur. So, copper, in the end, we don't copper. care for copper. Yeah. yeah, copper for sulfur is a problem too. The left thing, Dr. Reddy, again. If you have more questions, you can. If you have more questions, you can ask in the break. So, it's not too quick. Back on the schedule. Our next speaker is Dr. Khalid Azam. Uh, Dr. Azam got his bachelor's and master's degree in chemical engineering from University of Science and Technology.